and most importantly, we love our Constitution, we love our God, and we love the rule of law. the illegal aliens themselves, but we'd really love it if they'd consider packing their bags, going home, <laughs> Okay, I want to just spend a few minutes talking about why Arizona acted, and then I'll turn it over to the man you've come here to see. Um, you know, Milton Friedman, Nobel Prize winning economist, put it best. He said, it's just obvious. You can't have open immigration and a welfare state. That's right. Think about it. You know, the revisionist historians, they want to say, oh, every wave of immigration is just like the other one, and it's just Americans, you know, being nativist and not uh, being friendly and welcoming. No, there are real differences. Well, not only is this wave of, illegal, of immigration one that is comp uh, composed in large part of illegal immigration, it's also illegal immigration into a welfare state which wasn't around in the 19-teens, in the 1890s, and some of the past waves in the 1840s and 50s. That makes a big difference because there's a huge taxpayer burden. Um, how big is the taxpayer burden? Well, the Heritage Foundation calculated it in 2007 is $89.1 billion a year. That's net cost at all levels of government combined, local, state, and federal. $89.1 billion. That's after you take into account any taxes that maybe contributed federal taxes on a, on a fossil security number. That's after you take into account any sales taxes, cigarette taxes, gas taxes, everything. We're still $89.1 billion in the hole. And the bulk of that burden falls at the state and local level. The federal portion of that $89.1 billion is only $10 billion. The rest is on the cities and states. Arizona, it's estimated that the cost, not deducting any taxes gain, but the cost, according to Russell Pierce, is $2.7 billion a year. Think about that when your state legislature is dealing with budget overruns. You know, and since the burden falls mainly on the states, I like to say that illegal immigration is the ultimate unfunded mandate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If you think about it, there's a big difference between states and the federal government, lots of differences, but one of them is, unlike the federal government, which can't just, which, which can just print more money or can borrow more money, and, well, in matter of fact, they're, borrow, they're having our children and our grandchildren borrow the money, states actually have to, by state constitutional requirements, balance their budgets. That's why the states have to act. You look at city after city, state after state, where they're trying to do something, they're also trying to figure out a way to stop the runaway spending. And now in some states, for example, the spending, the budget deficit, in part caused by illegal immigration, has gotten so high that they're even raising our taxes. Yeah. Boy, aren't we happy about that, another half cent. No taxes. taxes. You know, but Arizona, in contrast, is moving in the right direction. They're going after one of the causes of the problem that digs so deeply into our pocketbook. I'm not going to dwell too much on the criminal aspects of what drove SB 1070, but look, they are facing a real crisis in Arizona right now. Look at the kidnapping statistics. In 2008 alone, there were 240 kidnappings in Phoenix, which is now the second largest kidnapping city in the world. And people are being kidnapped for ransom. This is unreal. Phoenix is what? The metro area about twice the size of Kansas City? Imagine if we had 120 kidnappings a year in Kansas City. This place would be up in arms. People wouldn't just be concealed carrying, they'd be open carrying with multiple weapons. Oh, 